we serve an excellent God. Amen. We can get behind that. We serve an excellent God with a more excellent name who's excellent in greatness and in ever loving kindness. And let me just say there's nothing average or mediocre about our God. There is nothing average about our God. And since we, church, are representatives of God, both individually in our lives and corporately as a local body, then there should be nothing status quo or mediocre about what we do or who we are. There shouldn't be. We, we should never be average in our day-to-day living, in our, our corporate worship, in the way we do things as a local body. We should never be average because we're representatives of God himself, who's definitely not average. We are called and created by God in glory to live and to be excellent in life. Amen? So this is the scripture we left off with last week. It's Proverbs chapter 17, verse 27. He that hath knowledge spareth his words. Husbands, get it. Hey, women. Okay, whoa. Ooh. He who has knowledge spareth his words. Sometimes we need to think before we speak. Amen? It says, a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. In other words, uh, we want excellence both in our speech and our actions. We want excellence both in our speech and our actions. As a follower of Christ, we want to be excellent in spirit. We want to be excellent in spirit because in Jesus, and I said it when we were in our worship, in Jesus, we have an excellent spirit. We already have an excellent spirit. It is excellent. We are excellent in Jesus. But we want the real us to please stand up. Please stand up. That's for for Rochelle. That's a 90s reference for Rochelle and anybody else who got it. But we want the... (laughs) We want the spirit of excellence inside of us to really show itself. To come out from, from the inside out. Let's look at some quick fire examples of persons of an excellent spirit. So we can kind of start to see how this this has evolved through scripture and now into our everyday life. Let's look at Daniel. Now Daniel, Daniel lion's den. A lot of people just think about Daniel and think that, oh, thank goodness the cat didn't eat him. But they don't think about Daniel and where he came from. Daniel was a man of excellent character. He had excellent spirit. And, And Daniel was one even in an oppressive government. And this is... I'm not saying that we're here. Don't hear what I'm not saying. But even in an oppressive government, Daniel was able to see increase in his life. And some of us this morning need to understand that even in an oppressive society, an oppressive workplace, an oppressive home environment, you can still see increase with the spirit of excellence with the Lord. Amen. Good. So Daniel was one of an a, a excellent character. And his character allowed him to see increase even in that oppressive government. His character traits allowed him to be promoted in some very difficult times. And scripture tells us that Daniel was a man of excellent spirit. It says in Daniel chapter 5, 12, in as much as an excellent spirit. And I love how it starts that way because then it starts listing everything that Daniel had with excellence. And it says that he goes on to explain that he was excellent in other things like knowledge and understanding and dreams and and problem solving and and, and being able to work through issues so much so that the king even renamed him. Man, you're you're so good at your job, that's not even your name anymore. Y'all know who I'm talking about, right? If you're so good at something, you just, you get a nickname because you're just good at it or you're really bad at it. Anyway, I I love this because it's very notable to notice that in this scripture, notice what comes first before everything else. He was a man of excellent spirit. I think it's important to see that that was first. Excellent spirit. Because you can know the right things, but still have a poor spirit and a bad attitude. Amen? You can know that many leaders do that. A lot of leaders, they, they have the knowledge uh, about something and, and how it should be worked out and, and how it should be accomplished. And they have the path to do it, but not the spirit of excellence in them. Not the spirit of excellence in, in the commitment to excellence because really it truly is a commitment. It's necessary. Can I get a witness that commitment is necessary for pursuit? If, if, if Christy and I were, were young again, because today's my birthday, y'all, some of y'all know that, um, 35, I realized, was old, so now I'm just older than old. And, 
Not for you. This is, everybody has a personal experience. This is my own personal experience. Like when 35 hit me, like that's when I got gout in my toes. Uh, when 35 hit me, that's when I sneezed and, and, and slipped the disc. Yeah, yeah. When 35 hit, it, gray started coming out of places it shouldn't. So that's just my personal experience. Some of you, you don't crack. I mean, I'm, y'all are excellent. You're welcome, Jeremy. <laughs> Speaking specifically of you. Where was I going? I don't know. So, oh, in, in commitment to excellent, you have to be committed to pursuit. If Christy and I were still, still young and I, and I saw her for the first time, how do you how many know I have to be committed to my pursuit of Christy? Or in the way it worked out with our relationship, she had to be committed in her pursuit of me. No, it's true. Ain't it? Uh, Oh, come on. You're in church now. Yeah. But there's a commitment. If you want to go hiking and you see that mountain, (laughs) if you want to pursue the top, it takes commitment. It takes commitment. If you want to pursue the things of God, church, in the world in which we live... It takes commitment. If you want a healthy marriage, it takes commitment. If you want straight A's, and this is what we tell our kids in school, it takes commitment, Colin. <laughs> it takes commitment. Are, are you with me? So if we're going to be committed to excellence, then there's a pursuit that happens. It, we will always be pursuing excellence at the end of this uh, sermon today. I'll tell you that excellence is not the goal. I'm going to show you what the goal is. But we will always be pursuing excellence. I want things done right and in order and to a certain degree. But listen, not at the high price of legalism. Not at the the cost of condemnation or, or, or being mean and evil, if you will. Leaving body bags, body bags in the wake of perfection. Not that. Because listen, if that's our idea of excellence, then are we really doing anything truly of eternal value? I don't think so. I think an excellent spirit is not something that we can manufacture with our flesh through quote-unquote perfection. I think an excellent spirit will be the things that lead us to, to something of eternal, eternal value. Excellence comes from a spirit that is supernaturally yoked to Jesus, our Lord. Let me say it again. Excellence comes from a spirit of being supernaturally yoked to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's as if Jesus were doing it. It's as if Jesus were showing us how. It's as if Jesus were being Jesus through us. That's the spirit of excellence. Can I get a witness that Jesus was excellent? Perfect in all His ways? We can get behind that. But when I say you're excellent, you go, eh, mm-hmm. don't know about that, Pastor. Well, no, to you and your flesh, you're far from it. <laughs> Amen. But you and your spirit, you are excellent. And Jesus has created a way for excellence to come out of us. That's what the spirit of excellence is. It's being yoked up to Jesus, our Lord and Savior. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 4, talking about Jesus... Talking about Jesus, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 4 says, Having become so much better than the angels. You know, Jesus didn't have a problem with being better than the angels. He didn't, he didn't take a qualm with that. Being so much better than the angels as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Jesus has a more excellent name. He is Lord of lords, King of kings. He's even above all angels. All powers and principalities. He's above it all. He doesn't have a qualm with that. He doesn't struggle being better or more excellent. Look at his ministry in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 6. Talking about Jesus. But now he, Jesus, has obtained a more excellent ministry. Inasmuch as he is also a mediator of a better covenant. Which was established on better promises. Man, we should shout to God for that. You're not having to give up a sacrifice of bull and goats this morning. That's a good thing. Now we just call it barbecue. (laughs) Jesus had a more excellent name. He had a more excellent ministry. Church, if Jesus obtained a more excellent ministry, then what's wrong with us obtaining a more excellent ministry? 
I, I don't see what would be wrong with that. Hebrews chapter 8 said that he obtained a more excellent ministry. We know that what he did was founded a better covenant. Really, let's, we, we preach this. We, we say, let's follow Jesus. Let's follow our Lord and Savior. Let's, let's be led by the Lord. And I hate that in church sometimes because it's a pastor. You ask somebody to do something, they go, ah, I just want to feel led. Amen? I knew a guy who, he was a pastor. He had a block of lead in his office. And when someone said that, he'd go, here you go. Y'all do not find that funny. I thought it was hilarious. You want to feel lead? Rub it. There's some lead. Now let's go get to work. I'm going to do that. Listen, if we're truly going to follow after Jesus, then we're going to have to do things right. Right? It, 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 as if Jesus were the one doing the things. Man, could, we, could you imagine if our volunteers showed up as if they were Jesus? Just doing it out of a spirit of, of, of servants? I mean, if you look at Jesus and the ministry of Jesus, his whole ministry was a selfless ministry. It was never about him. Was it? He was healing others. He was fixing others. He was teaching others. He was feeding others. Did I say he was feeding others? Man, he was serving, loving on people. How great would the church look today if all we did was act like Jesus? Mm. If we're being led by the Lord, church, we're going to have to start doing things better tomorrow than we are today and being content with what we did today. So Jesus has a more excellent ministry. Why wouldn't we want a more excellent ministry? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4 says, By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, and through it, he being dead, still speaks. When we have a spirit of excellence, even when our flesh is gone, it's, an, it's, it's of eternal value. It keeps on going. It, it, it goes before us, if you will. Because it's not us in the flesh doing it, it's by the Spirit of the Lord. I can go on and on about examples of excellence in Scripture, but I think we get it. God's excellent. We get it. Jesus doesn't have a problem or a qualm over excellence. I think we get it. And you and I should follow his lead. All right, let's, uh, let's use the rest of this morning to look at the process and the pursuit of commitment and excellence. If you're taking notes, I'm going to give you uh, two really quick references to write down. Uh, some foundational things that we're going to be building on over the course of these next few weeks. And I said it last week, but I'm going to say it again this week. Number one, number one, excellence involves what we do, how we do it, and who we are. There's three things. It's, it's, it's not just what we do, but it's also how we do it. And it makes up our identity of who we are. I know we touched on it last week, but I think it's important we look at it again today. It doesn't just involve what we do. Did you hear me? I, I don't want to preach a series on excellence, and this is all we get from the series. What we do. Okay? That's a start, but it's an incomplete vision. Too many times I've seen people, they catch the, the truth behind excellence, but they only get it in part. And they condense it down only to what we do. What we do. And if we're not careful what we're going to look at in excellence, if, if this is how we see it, then we're going to go, it's, what are we doing on the stage? What are we doing in the media? What are we doing in children's department? What are we doing at home? What are we doing with our kids? What are we doing at work? And, and again, that's a good vision, but it's an incomplete vision. You can't just stop at what we do, but it goes beyond that. If you're not careful, you're going to minimize excellence to just what we do. And you're going to leave out the two other legs of the three-legged stool of excellence. And that is how we do it and who we are. So, if you're not careful, you're going to end up looking at what we do, what we do, what we do, what we do, and you're going to fall down and be mad at everybody and wonder why we missed it and why we messed up on excellence. It's not about what we do. It's also about how we do it. Most people can track with the to-do list. If you're a to-do list person, raise your hand. Okay, keep it up. If you're maybe not a to-do list person, but you're a list person, raise your hand. Keep it up. If, if you're not a to-do list person... And not quite a list person, but if you have a checkbox, you're willing to check it. Raise your hand. Okay, most of you get that. Those of you who didn't, we can't, we can't have a relationship anymore. <laughs> no, most people can track with the to-do list. Most people can track with what to do. 
what to do. But where do we mess up as a people? A lot of times, it's not what we do. It's how we go about doing what we do. Right? Man, because if it's just what we do with excellence, then you could go around and try to be excellent in everything, but leave in a wake of destruction in your path. Because you don't care how you do it. You just care about what's the end result of what you do. And that's dangerous. We got to understand that when we speak the truth, we speak the truth in, in love. I just told her that I hated her haircut. I just see it as it, as it is. I tell her as it is. What? That's just, you're mean. That's just rude. No, I just tell them the truth. No, you tell them the truth in love. Some things, you know, the wise man keeps his mouth shut. <laughs> Amen. 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 Job, I've got it. Sometimes when we tell the truth, let's say this, you find a lost person. There's a lot of truth that lost person needs, amen? A lot of truth that lost person needs. Can you just spill the truth all over them? They can't accept it. They won't receive it. It doesn't make sense. It won't compute. But if you can show the truth and tell the truth in love, your love will be the vehicle for them to see truth. I hope we can get that this morning. It's not just what we do, but it's how we do it. And finally, it's your identity. It's who we are. Excellence can't come, it can't come out of your flesh. It has to come from the Spirit. That is the Spirit of excellence coming out. Number two, if you're taking notes, number two. Excellence is not to impress others, but it is to please our God. Man, I wish the church would get this. Did you know that every time I'm up here on a Sunday morning, it's not to please you? It's not to impress you? Y'all don't like that, do you? You got real quiet. You're like, eh, I thought you were here for me. No, it's, it's to please my God. And if I please my God to the best of my ability, man, that's going to impress you. But that's not why I do it. Maybe that will impress you to please your God too. Church, we need to get this. Excellence is not about impressing others. It's about pleasing our God. Me desiring excellence is not to impress people. If, if I want to do a, a, a backflip into the splits while baptizing the saved, you can see it, can't you? Our church will be packed. We'd be full. We'd be running over. You know? that everybody be talking about, did you see that backflipping preacher? Baptizing the back flipping Baptist. <laughs> they, they're used to hearing back slipping Baptist. They're not used to hearing back flipping baptizer. Have you seen that? No, I haven't seen that. Well, Ethel, get your purse. We're going. Why? 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 Because that's to impress people. But we're not here to impress people, so you're not going to be seeing me doing a backflip baptizing the saved. Oh, I know. <laughs> David, you can do that later. The, the point is, and I want you to think about this now. A lot of people, if not heard with the right heart, when they hear excellence, maybe excellence the way the world defines it, they're going to hear that we just want to be men pleasers. We just want, we're just trying to impress our community. We're just trying to impress others. But excellence isn't about impressing others. Excellence is about pleasing our Father. I wish we could live a life that was a nothing but a life of trying to please our Father. But in reality, sad reality, most of us, not all of us, I'm not, I'm not picking on you. I'm picking on everybody else but you. Most of us want to please ourselves first, maybe others second. I don't know how far God falls down that list. Just I'm not being mean. I'm just being honest. Man, how cool would it be if we just go around trying to please God, trying to please our Father you know, I don't know. Why do I want to be excellent? It's not to impress my friends. Look at what we're doing over here. No, it's, it's so my father will be pleased by me. Why? Because he is excellent. He is excellent. And I'm his kid. And I want to, I want to honor him and I want to please him. You know, I'm my dad's kid. Did y'all know that? Shocker. Shock face. You know what? The worst thing was not the belt. And I did get the belt and it was good for me. 
<laughs> I'm not going there. But it was not the belt. And it was not the saying that came before the belt. This is going to hurt me more. It's going to hurt you. Yeah. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. The worst thing was the disappointment in my father's eyes. You know? And yeah, y'all, everyone said, yep, was not thinking about Mike Lowe. And like, yeah, I'm not, I don't want him to be disappointed in me either. No, you're thinking about what I'm saying. The worst is the disappointment in my father's eyes. But I tell you the best, the best is the honor in my father's eyes when I please him. Amen? Church, I want us to get that. We want to please our Father God, and that's why we do it, because He's excellent, and we're just a kid. We're just a kid of heaven. We're just, we're just a chip off the old block, if you will, in Jesus, and we want to please our Father. He is excellent, thus we should be excellent in all things. In all things. I want things done right, not because I'm hung up on right and wrong. I want things done right because that is what pleases God. That's what pleases God Amen. and my wife. <laughs> And I want to please God, and I want to please my wife. She's always right. Amen? 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 Okay. Listen, that's, pleasing people is not what spiritual excellence is all about. Impressing people. Perfectionists, church, want to impress people. Perfectionists want things excellent because that's the way they want it. It's to impress themselves or those looking to them. True spiritual excellence is all for His glory. All right, let's, I, I wish I would have put these definitions on the screen. I'll do better next week. Amen? Uh, less than excellent today. We'll try for more next week. But I've got some definitions. A dictionary definition and then a, a Greek definition of the word excellence. And I want us to look at that real quickly this morning. If you're taking notes, the dictionary ex, uh, of excellence is possessing outstanding quality, superior merit. Possessing outstanding quality or superior merit. Man, that word superior, man, that means something, doesn't it? That's a special word, superior. Su superior. I'm going to tell this story. I wish it were my own. It's not my own yet. Maybe one day. But let me tell you the story. I I've got a pastor friend of mine. Loves people. Great guy. There, there are good pastors out there. You okay? Okay. And great guy. He was counseling this couple. She was saved, but he was lost. Okay? And they're coming in for counseling. And, 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 and she has an agenda and has her own plan, which she just thought they were coming for counseling. <laughs> I think that's funny. Um, but as they began counseling, and you have this saved woman and this lost man, they're telling my pastor friend all of the problems. Well, she was telling my pastor friend all of his problems, Okay. He's, he's bad at this, and he's not good at this, and this, and this, and this, and this. And for 30 minutes, she went on and on and on about this no good, sorry, retrograde of a husband. Y'all are not appreciating where this... Are, I, I hope it goes somewhere quick, Trent, because I'm really uncomfortable right now. <laughs> but you know what he did? He, he stopped right there, and he, he, he said, look, I, I hear everything you're saying. I, I really do. I, I hear, and I think the Spirit is leading us to go down a direction and give you some instruction here. I can't really speak to him. He's lost. He's not going to understand what I'm saying because I'm, I'm giving truth and I'm giving instruction. It's not going to make sense to him. He's not going to get this. But I got a lot of instruction for you. And he started, he started going down all the instruction. I need you to really be forgiving and understand what forgiveness looks like. I need you to experience God's love because what you're experiencing now is not the love of the Father. And it's definitely not what you're displaying towards Him. You know what? He's a good man. He's providing for you. He sat here for 30 minutes and didn't defend himself. How can a lost man do that? You need to be grateful. And he's just on and on about the things that she could do, instructions and wisdom that she could do. Well, she left mad and he left beat, right? But I'll tell you what happened. I don't know if it's two weeks, three weeks, I can't remember the story. But two, three weeks later, this man emails my pastor friend. Says, hey, can I just borrow 15 minutes of your time? Sure. They get together. And as they got to talking, this man looked at my friend. And he said, look, I've met a lot of Christians in my life. And I, I've heard a few, a few pastors, a few preachers. But you are different than all of them. Will you, will you introduce me to Jesus? And that man got saved. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? And that's not even the point of the story. 
You know, what the point of the story, I think there's a good point to the story. The point of the story is, counseling didn't go as planned. She left mad, he left beat. But every time that that man sees my friend, he calls him something. He calls him superior pastor. Like I said, I wish you were my story. It's not there yet. But <laughs> he, he, every time he sees him, he says, superior pastor. Superior pastor. And you know what? It just makes the rest of us pastors feel dumb. <laughs> feel, feel less than. But before I heard this story, I didn't understand where he was going with it. But now I see how intimate it really is. When that man says superior pastor, it means something to him. Because really what it means is you're the best I've ever met at what you do. You have impressed upon me a faith in Jesus. So I'm calling you superior pastor. Isn't that good? Man. Now listen, don't, don't hear what I'm not saying, okay? Please don't hear what I'm not saying. I don't want to demand that, that I be superior pastor. I don't want to demand that you call me superior pastor. Superior. It would be nice. <laughs> but, but I'm not demanding. Christy, every once in a while I do something. I, I don't know where it is. It's probably in the store when we're shopping. Yeah, it's probably there most of the time. And she goes, oh, Lord. I'm like, you don't have to call me that. Just call me husband. <laughs> All the time, right? Anyway, I'm not asking that you call me superior pastor. But listen, I am, I am saying and I'm asking myself, I desire to be a superior pastor. Why not? Why shouldn't I desire to be a superior pastor? Why should I desire that? Not because I think I'm better than anyone else. Amen? It's not because of that or more important. This is how God sees me. God sees me as if, as if I was no better than any other man, but I'm just as good as any. That's how God sees you. You're just as good as anyone and no better than anyone. And I hope we can get that. In, in, in that man's eyes, my friend was superior. The best he had ever come across why wouldn't we want to be superior? Why wouldn't I want to be a superior pastor? Why wouldn't you want, listen, why wouldn't you want to be a superior spouse? You don't got to look anywhere else, Bubba. You got me. <laughs> why wouldn't you want to be a superior friend? We just finished a, a sewing series on seeds. And I told you, uh, the person who's whining said, I just want friends. I got no friends. Well, be friendly. And you will reap a harvest of friends. If you're the superior friend, you'll have too many. And then you'll go, God, I'm done with being a superior friend. But why wouldn't we want to be a superior friend or superior spouse, superior coworker, or father or mother? Church, I mean it. I want to be a superior pastor. Not because I want to be elevated myself, but because I want him to be glorified. That man came to know the Lord, not because my pastor was doo -doo -doo, his own horn, but because he was being a superior leader, bringing excellence to the lost. I don't know why anyone wouldn't want to be the best pastor on the planet, spouse on the planet, friend on the planet. Comparing myself, and, and not comparing myself with others. Did y'all hear me? I'm not comparing myself with others. That's the trick. You don't want to compare yourself with others. I'm comparing myself, hear me now, I'm comparing myself with God's own lofty goals and plans for my life, which are far more exceedingly better than I could ever hope or imagine. So I don't compare myself with others. I compare myself with God's plans for myself. And I go, whoa, God, I'm nowhere close. Spirit of excellence rise in me. Spirit of excellence rise in me. Spirit of excellence rise in me. And, and I, I press toward, I pursue, I have commitment toward the goal of excellence because I know God's plans for me are bigger and better. God's plans, church, for you are bigger and better. We need to commit to being superior and excellent in all, in all our ways. In all our ways. I am called to a spirit of excellence. You are called to a spirit of excellence. Dictionary definition of excellence. Possessing outstanding quality, superior merit. Why, would, why wouldn't any pastor on this, on this earth not want to possess outstanding qualities? Why would any spouse not want to possess outstanding qualities? Have you had my wife's brisket? Outstanding qualities. Yeah, have you seen me mow my yard lately? Outstanding qualities. Amen. Anyway, 
I don't know of one leader that I honor that wouldn't want to possess outstanding qualities. And you shouldn't either. We should want to, have, to possess outstanding qualities, to have superior merit. As a church, I don't know why any one of our leaders or our volunteers wouldn't want to possess outstanding qualities. Outstanding qualities of kindness. Man, every time I go to that church, they're just so kind. They just, they just eke it. They just ooze it. They, they ooze kindness. Just, you just can't help but smile because it just oozes on you. Why we, wouldn't, why we want any one of our, our leaders or our volunteers to possess qualities of mercy. God's been merciful to you. Why can't we be merciful to others? They stand outstanding qualities of forgiveness or of joy. The dictionary definition, possessing outstanding quality, superior merit, merit, better, distinguished, and different. I'm not trying to be better than the Joneses. I'm not trying to be better than other pastors out there. I'm not trying to be better than the church down the street. Can I get a witness? We're not trying to be better. We're different. That's okay. God created us that way. We're not trying to be better than them. We want them to be elevated. We want every church in this city to be elevated in Jesus' name. If every church in this nation were, were better, were elevated, were walking in a spirit of excellence, this nation would look completely different than it does. Church, we don't want to be better than the church down the road. We want them to be better than themselves they are today. We want to be the better. We want to be better tomorrow than the connect we are today. Amen. Amen. You can praise God for that. And, and I'm excited about it. You know why? Because we've decided to be intentional as leaders, as elders, as church members, to not just maintain the status quo. To not be average. Do you want to be average? Mm. We possess in us the spirit of excellence. And I want from the inside out God to make us better tomorrow than we are today. I'm going to tell you why in just a minute. We want every church doing good because our country is going to be do, doing good if that's the case. We got a little boy that's, that's down our street, um, three houses, four houses down. His name is Chance. I don't know how old Chance is now, five, six years old. Seven? Oh my goodness, he's old. But... This little boy, we've known him since he was born. We moved in, uh, and, and he was born after that. And ever since he can talk, he's been saying the same thing. Well, he's been saying the same couple things. Number one is he can never say my name right. And him being the firstborn of three children, now I think two, four, and seven, they all call me by the wrong name because he couldn't say my name right, so now they all call me the wrong name. They can't say Trent, so they all call me Mr. Shrimp. <laughs> If I'm lying, I'm dying. <laughs> Mr. Shrimp. And their mom encourages it. Y'all say goodbye to Mr. Shrimp. <laughs> we saw him in Walmart. I'm exchanging something in Walmart. And for five minutes while the wives are talking, those kids, Mr. Shrimp, Mr. Shrimp, Mr. Shrimp. I had to tell the story to the lady behind me. That's not my name. That's not my name. It's also not permission for you to call me Mr. Shrimp. <laughs> but the point is, there's two things that, that he said from the, from the time he could talk. Mr. Shrimp, number one. But number two, we've asked him, Chance, how are you doing today? Better. Chance, how's your day today? Doing okay? Better. Chance, are you having a great day? Is today a good day? It's better. Isn't that cool? Man, every day is better for that kid. That's, I wish every day were better for us. That's the spirit of excellence. And I don't know if I want to say it physically out loud every day. Better. Today's better. Right? And some of you might need to do that. Just say it. Okay? But in my spirit, I just want a spirit of excellence to scream at me every morning. Today is better. Today I'm better. And it's a pursuit. It's a commitment to be better. To be excellent. To be excellent. Uh, I don't... Again, I don't know if I want to say it physically, but I want my, my spirit, I want to know in my knower that today is better than yesterday and tomorrow is going to be better than today. My situations around me, they may change. I may find that there's a, there's a new, bigger, and better problem tomorrow than I face today. That's, that's a tension, right? I, I explained this to someone the other day, that, that, that problems, you can solve one or two problems, but problems in general, they're always going to be in our lives. So it's not something you solve problem and all problems dissipate and go away. It's, it's, it's that problems are a natural part of our life. They're just a tension that we face. 
The good news is if we're growing in excellence and our spirit of excellence, then our problems get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. It's kind of like what Mike said in our men's retreat. We're talking about men wanting to be giant killers, and it sounds really masculine, right? You want to be a giant killer? Yeah. You want to knock off heads of giants? Yeah. You want to hold up Goliath's head and blood just run down? Yeah. Right? Just me? Okay. Yeah. That's some WWE for you there. But, but really, Mike goes, no. He's the only guy that said, no, I don't want to keep being a giant slayer. My problems aren't big anymore. My problems are tiny. When David saw Goliath, he didn't see the giant. Everybody else saw the giant. What did he see? He said, uncircumcised Philistine. Yeah. That's what he saw. Your problem doesn't have to be a problem. Amen? Tomorrow can be better than today, whether or not our circumstances change, and they will. You can still grow in a spirit of excellence. I'm going to tell you this, and, and some might hear it mean, but that's not how I mean it, okay? It's not how I mean it. If we're walking with Jesus, if we are yoked up to Jesus, we're walking with Jesus, we're going to see change for the better. We can't help but see change for the better. If, if, if our church is not changing, then we're not walking with God. If you are not changing, you're not walking with God. I, I, I don't mean it mean, okay? I love you, and this is why I'm saying it. This is truth in love. If I'm not changing, that means that I have broken focus. I'm not beholding the glory of the Lord. Because the scripture is very evident. The scripture is very evident that if I am beholding the glory of the Lord as in a mirror, then I will be transformed from glory to glory. I'm going to be changed. And so if we're walking with the Lord and our focus is on God, we're going to see supernatural, radical change in our life. I don't mean it mean, I mean it for your freedom. I mean it for the spirit of excellence to come out of us. Because the Greek definition of excellence is something different than what the world throws at us. The Greek definition of excellence is, and I, again, I wish I was more excellent this week, but next week. The Greek word is de, de aferro. De aferro. I was practicing this pronunciation, and Christy came in my office when I was practicing. She's like, what did you say to me? De aferro. And that's the Greek word for excellence. Everyone say it with me. De aferro. Yeah, I sound like that the first time too. But, but de aferro, it means this. It means to bear fruit. And it means transport or carry. What? Excellence means to bear fruit. Excellence means to transport or to carry. De aferro. So I really spent time on this. And I really just went to the Lord on this and said, God, what are you trying to show us here? Excellence means to transport something. Let me just end with this. Excellence, like I said earlier, Excellence is not the goal. Excellence is not where we're headed. Excellence is how we're getting to where we're headed. Okay? Let me show you the goal real quick. The goal is we are trying to bring people to God. And we're trying to create an environment, an atmosphere to bring the presence of God to people. That's the goal. Bringing people to God and God to people. Getting them together. That's our goal. Excellence, church is our way, our means to get there. We are carriers of the message of Christ. We are witnesses of God to people. To people. One of the many ways that we witness, witness God to people and people to God is through the carrier, through the bucket, if you will, through the transportation, through the vehicle of excellence. Of excellence. When, when someone looks at you and says, you know, I've been around a lot of people, but no one like you before. You're supposed superior. Why? Because my God's superior. Because let me point you to who's changed me. Because I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was one of these things, but no longer my identity's in Jesus. I have a spirit of excellence. Because my God is superior. Because my God is the one and only superior Lord and Savior. Church, when it plays out just like it should, just like it, it it can in the world, then that means you have just carried the glory of God to someone through the spirit of excellence. 
You just carried the glory of God to someone through the spirit of excellence. That's the goal. Are you ready to be carriers of the Lord in, in the spirit of excellence? Let's give praise God for that. Amen. Let's give praise to God for that.